we have Awais Zahid. He's software development, uh, development manager at Autodesk here. And he has 12 years of software development experience in web mobile development, server-side programming, agile scrum, and project management. And has uh, degrees in computer science and project management. So he'll be talking about how to create awesome polyglot applications using Graal VM. Very good. So let's in, let's welcome Awais. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. Uh, I really admire your uh, resolve, like coming in a freezing room uh, to listening to this talk. Yeah, we Singaporeans have like a very low tolerance of uh, coal anyways. So just bear with me. All right, so today we will talk about um, how to create polyglot applications using GraalVM. Um, quick introduction before, I, before we go further. Um, my name is Oez Zahid. I have over 14 years of experience uh, working around the globe. My main focus area is on cloud platforms, creating cloud products and services with an emphasis on resiliency and scalability. Uh, JavaScript is my main forte. Uh, I love football and follow AS Roma. They are not doing really good this season again, but I still love them. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn as well. The handles are a bit sort of chopped, but you can ask me later. So um, interoperability. When we talk about polyglot applications or language interoperability in general, uh, there are a lot of frameworks out there that can do that. So I started looking at GraalVM a few months ago um, uh, when I was uh, trying to evaluate uh, a messaging SDK written by another team in Autodesk uh, in Java. And my team um, works in Ruby. So this is not a very unique scenario uh, that people will say, oh, geez, what are the odds? Uh, in fact, in the enterprise setting, it is all, it, it is, uh, the development work is done by various teams or agile teams. And more often than not, they uh, choose different tools and technologies for their respective work. Um, sometimes based on their preference, or sometimes based on the problem they are trying to solve. Um, for example, uh, people usually go for Python when they are working on machine learning uh, solutions, or go for R for data science. So it is common to come across uh, scenarios like this. Uh, where you want to use something and that particular piece of code is not written in your language. So um, I started evaluating the options. Um, so there are a lot of things out there uh, for interoperability. Um, some of them are using a, a language neutral mechanism or interfaces to allow interaction like uh, Thrift, Swig, I can throw a protocol buffer into it as well, but it has a different use case. Um, then you have some libraries which are specific to either a platform or a language, or they focus mainly on bridging uh, the native to manage code, uh, code bases, like uh, GN, GNI, GNA. And if you look at uh, cloud platforms, they are also trying a few things. Uh, recently, um, AWS, they introduce uh, layers with AWS uh, Lambda so that you can, have, you can create a common code base uh, for use uh, across multiple cloud functions. So you can always use uh, their uh, custom runtime API to create a layer in a different language. And then I came across Graal. So Graal has a a very kind of a unique way of solving this problem. Um, no interface files, um, a sort of a, a that support for languages. They have a good set of languages to support, and then it is not specific to any platform. So today's focus is on GraalVM. 
So let's look at what Graal VM is. So <clears throat> Graal VM is a polyglot multilingual virtual machine. Um, it creates a common stack for applications running in uh, Java, JavaScript, Python, R, C++, and many more. And this common stack actually allows uh, interoperability uh, in a shared runtime. <clears throat> so just to look at like the holistic view of Graal VM, um, this is a holistic view of Graal VM. Um, there are different layers of Graal VM. It starts with uh, Java VM, then there is a compiler, Graal compiler, and then a Truffle framework on top of it. So there's a lot going on here. So let's take a stab at it one component at a time. OK, so Graal compiler. Graal compiler is the most important aspect of the Graal VM. Um, the only difference between the VM, which is the hotspot VM, and the Graal VM is the fact that Graal VM uses Graal compiler uh, in the, uh, in, as a C2 compilation mode. So as you know that in, a, in, a, in JVM, uh, we have two JIT compilers other than Java C, C1 and C2. So these two uh, compilers have different techniques for JIT compilation and can generate a different machine code uh, for the same Java method. So uh, usually Java applications make use of both of them, and which is called tiered compilation, which is a default since Java 8. So in the tiered compilation, um, in the tiered compilation um, uh, is, uh, is start by using C1 at the start it's the start of the application for a better startup perf performance. And then once the application is properly warmed up, then C2 compiler kicks in for more aggressive optimization uh, and better performance. So <clears throat> having like a new compiler that can take, OK, so by the way, C1, C2 is also called client compiler and server compiler as well. So both are fine. So, uh, replacing a C2 compiler or server compiler with Graal compiler is not something unique. Uh, if, if you have seen different um, SDKs, like uh, Adopt SDK or Azul SDK, they have their own customized compilers in the JVM. Um, so, um, so what Graal is sort of giving us, what C1 and C2 was not giving us. So to start with, uh, Graal compiler is written uh, from scratch in Java, um, unlike C1 and C2 compilers, which are written in C, C++. Um, I know you guys will be asking, like, how can this be a good thing? So, um, but it is known that um, the, the C1, C2 compilers have had known issues. And optimization in the context of strongly type managed languages can be done better. So it makes sense to have, to have a compiler uh, written in Java or some high-level language. Um, there, is a, there is a good link that I will share later. It was supposed to be there at the bottom right corner. It's kind of chopped in, um, which is actually talking about this topic specifically, like why it makes sense to have a compiler written in Java in the VM world, in the VM ecosystem. Uh, but I will share the uh, references at the end as well. So I will not go into the detail of it, because that will sort of become a totally different topic. Uh, so <clears throat> all right, so yeah, I need to catch up where I was. Yeah, so it's written in Java. Um, and. Um, the reason it is possible for the Graal VM to be integrated in, in the JVM world is based on the, the thing called JVM CI, Java Virtual Machine Compiler Interface, which, is, uh, which was added in JDK 9 and since, since then backported to Java 8 as well. So that allows any uh, com compiler to be sort of act as C, C2 compiler. Uh, and interface and then sort of get all the events and then process and 
give it back. So the good, the benefits that we will get with crawl, there are three main benefits. First, it is more maintainable as compared to C1, C2 compilers. It is open source, available, good community around it. Um, it is not tightly coupled with JVM. So you can use Graal compiler in different contexts as well. Um, and the third thing, it has a good support for Truffle-based languages. Uh, talking about Truffle, that's the second thing. So Truffle is a language implementation framework that runs on top of Graal, as you can see it here. <clears throat> so um, the runtimes created by this uh, Truffle framework interprets languages as abstract syntax tree. And uh, it currently supports R, um, Python, um, Ruby. And uh, it, it has a good documentation uh, the, for the provisioning of new programming languages as well. So if you are developing your, your language using this framework, then in, uh, the JVM will look at your programming language implementation as, a, as any other Java program. So um, the advantage of having a common framework to create different languages actually helps you in um, the interoperability between them. And uh, you can have a language agnostic instrumentation around it as well. Because if all of them are running on JVM, so you can use profilers, samplers, tracers, all the things that you, we do for any other Java app, uh, program running in JVM. So uh, Sulong is one of the implementations of Truffle. It is a LLVM um, interpreter, uh, low-level uh, virtual machine. Um, it support it supports C++, Fortran, and all the languages that can be translated into uh, LLVM bitcode using any front ends like Clang or MacRuby. <clears throat> so if any one of you are interested in looking at like how to bridge the gap between native and managed code, uh, and you want to try GraalVM, so this is the place you should be looking at. All right, uh, ahead of time compilation. Um, ahead of time compilation, Graal also supports ahead of time compilation. Um, it comes with uh, a tool called native image that actually uh, compile your code into neg uh, native executable. So the, the native executable will not run on JVM or Graal VM. It runs on a different virtual machine uh, which is called Substrate VM. So uh, when the native image uh, tool is used, it actually sort of bakes in that Substrate VM into your uh, executable as well, so that you can have all the memory management, threat management at, um, at that level as well. <clears throat> um, so here, I sort of, one thing to know about Graal, that Graal has two execution modes. One is JVM, and the other one is native. Uh, if you run, uh, if you execute your application in JVM mode, then your program will run on JVM. Uh, and if, it is, if you choose the native mode, then it will run on um, the na native images the, which, was, which are created. Uh, so usually, um, native or ahead of time comp compiled uh, applications, they run, they have a better startup time and um, a lower memory footprint. But uh, the applications running on uh, JVM, they have a better peak performance and usually recommended for long running processes. <clears throat> so this support was also added in uh, JDK 9 in GEP uh, 2, 295. And so now it's, it's available. All right, so, okay, so, so far we have sort of looked at all the major components of Graal, uh, what are the components, um, and what are the languages it support, and um, how it is actually set up. 
But the question is, uh, should you be using Graal? Like, what are the benefits you will get moving into a Graal camp? Because if you have any application running on JVM, you want to move it to Graal VM, of course, this would be the first question you will ask yourself. And second is, uh, should I be using truffle-based implementations of the same languages that I'm already using, like Rubies and the uh, Node.js and the Pythons and R's? So um, to find this answer, I, I ran some benchmarks, both uh, which are sort of stated in the Graal website and others. Based on my experience, I don't trust the benchmarks uh, usually uh, sort of showcase on the, on the site of a particular framework. Um, so I did some digging as well. So I found some interesting results that I will share with you. So the first benchmark that I ran is uh, the embedded uh, templating in Ruby. So the blue bar is JRuby, and the yellow bar is Truffle Ruby. They, the Truffle implementation of Ruby, they call it Truffle Ruby. And the, the Truffle implementation of R, they call it Fast R. Um, so there is a, you can see that Truffle Ruby is like beating J, J, JRuby hands down, like boop. So which is really good. And this is, this is the benchmark defined in the Graal VM side. So it, it, it better perform well, right? So then I, What's the metric? so the metric is IPS, instructions per second. Yeah, uh, but even if, I, if you do just a time-based thing, it was, you can see the difference. So I ran another benchmark, uh, which is base64. I took like a ginormous string and then just do the encode and decode of it. Um, and then I found that JRuby was actually really good. And um, Truffle Ruby didn't work, uh, were, was not even near. So Truffle was like not trading well with JRuby in this benchmark. Um, so um, yeah, I will share some details later. So I have uh, created uh, an issue, and we are following up on the Truffle Ruby GitHub repo. There are some um, things uh, that they need to sort of implement. It's sort of a work in progress to sort of bump up those numbers. And then I ran another um, benchmark, which is, which is like take a huge file and just do a, a JSON parsing of it, and then just aggregate the numbers. I will share. I will show the code later on. So. Ruby was really, really fast. And this is the, the, uh, the matrix I'm using is the, just the plain execution time. It completed the whole thing in like half a second. On the other hand, Truffle took a lot of time, seven, seven seconds, um, which is a lot. So I took a step uh, further and just sort of try to see that if, can I make this thing a polyglot? Can I, you, instead of using a parse functionality that Truffle or JRuby is providing, can I use Node.js parse, uh, parse function and see how it works? So when I did that, the result I get is four seconds, which is better than seven, but nowhere near the actual JRuby implementation. <clears throat> So this one, um, the last, the gray bar that you see, the Truffle Node Polyglot, I was running in JVM. So applications running on JVM has a, it, it, it's sort of start slow. So I, I, I want to check, like, what would be the result if I run the same thing in native mode? So um, I ran the same thing in native mode and this is the result I got. Okay, drum rolls, okay, boom. So it, it is sort of half of what the JRuby is doing. So um, this is again, I was just playing around, looking at the profiling and uh, looking at all the memory uh, tracing, yes. Yes, yes. 
So uh, the benchmarks that uh, either the benchmark gem that you use in Ruby or the gem uh, IPS benchmark, which is based on uh, uh, the benchmark gem, they actually do some warm-ups as well. So you can define some cycles of warm-ups and the iterations. So it gives you kind of a closer picture. Yes, yes. So um, I mean, this was encouraging. So um, and I will show this code later on. And this, all of this code, all of the benchmarks that I have seen so far, it's available on GitHub. Um, and I have created a, a, con a container based on the Graal image. So all you need to do is to just clone it and then run it. Um, so you don't need to set up Graal VM. Um, OK, so let's look, the, look at this thing in a bit more detail. And that is my first demo for today. Um, the interoperability between Ruby and Node.js. All right, so I need to see how I can sh have this thing here. Okay, bear with me, sorry. I need to probably end my... Uh, okay, how can I show this thing there? Really? Ah, uh, damn. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. Uh. Okay. Um. Oh, uh, it's okay. This will make things a bit tricky for me. Okay, it's not working. Okay. Um, all right. So let, let's let's look at this one. Uh, so this is the before the polyglot um, code. I use the benchmark. Uh, required JSON, a very simple, you, I'm reading a really large file, and then just doing a parsing, and then uh, doing an aggregation of all the coordinates. A very simple benchmark. Um, now I want to show you guys, uh, all right. So this one is the polyglot version of the same thing. So there are two, the first, the first thing that you notice is this weird object called polyglot. So this polyglot is actually um, the interop framework that the Truffle use. Uh, and all the languages, they implement this, um, um, this polyglot. So uh, polyglot eval, what it is doing right now, it is taking the first parameter, which is the language. And the other one is what you want to do in that language, that foreign language. I mean, you can, have, you can write a long code in it as well. But right now, all I want is just a, the JavaScript parser. That's all. So I'm just feeding him, uh, that parser uh, the JSON I'm reading from the file. And then the result I'm getting is the J object, which is a foreign object in Ruby space. So to make it uh, enumerable, I'm using as enumerable so that I can sort of loop through it. So this is the only two lines I change, and then I just ran the same thing. And um, the results you have seen. Um, I think let's, let's execute this thing. Uh, I, I hope I can show you guys. It's hard to sort of do something here just looking at there. Anyways. OK. Ah. OK. OK. Uh, it's not working. Uh, 
sorry guys um okay i can just mirror i think that that will help cool okay sorry about that okay close where are you okay so i'm in my um truffle um code base so if i want to run this thing let's run this thing in the jvm world first i'll say jvm and i will say it's a polyglot just to tell um the runtime that uh, i am intending to use foreign languages in my ruby code and i also need to tell the compiler that hey um so this is important which is only needed for um uh, node js if you are using node js as a foreign language because node js or javascript is a single threaded is based on single threaded model so you need to tell the runtime that hey the foreign language is single threaded so that it can raise an errors if you are trying to access uh, those foreign language objects in a concurrent manner so this is kind of a safety net that graal created around it so right now i'm running it in jvm let's see the results all right so pretty much the same 6.5 seconds um uh, as uh, shown in the benchmark and so let's try the same thing with native plot single threaded all right so the only difference between these two uh, executions is the fact that the second one is actually running the native image of ruby runtime in in the first one the uh, what actually the vm do is like when you say ruby vm then it actually sort of load the uh, ruby runtime in J, in in jvm as well so that slows things down a bit so if you are sort of fighting for the benchmark just sort of so that you can um, sort of uh, have a bragging rights so do use native for it all right so um i have another example for you guys um this one is much more not from the space of benchmark but more kind of mimic mimicking the real world use cases so i have uh, so it's more about the interop between uh, uh node js and java so i have created a very simplified notification server in which the notification uh, notification service sorry and then in the notification service i have uh, the notification server written in java which is not doing a very kind of a super awesome thing is just sort of uh, just putting random numbers in a queue i mean you can replace this thing with actual notifications or anything whatever uh, the use case is um so this is the this is the java code it starts and do some computations and then just put something in the queue and on the other hand i have a receiver which is um a node js receiver it it is using uh, the worker threads and um so the idea what i'm trying to do is to create um um a solution in which you have a notification server putting something in the queue and then you have n number of worker threads sort of pulling the data from the same queue so <clears throat> for that um so i the the first thing that i'm doing after like defining the worker thread is uh, using the link block queue because i want to make sure that the access to the to the queue is concurrent um so uh, i'm just using the java queues uh, one of the in from the from the collection you can use any of the queues you want and then defining the threads and then i am actually initializing and calling a method of a java function so this is new you haven't seen this thing happening in 
in Node.js world before, right? Trust me. So um, the reason you can do this thing is because both of these code is actually using, uh, running in the same uh, runtime. So, and uh, so if you want to talk from one Truffle implementation to another, you will use the polyglot framework. But if the Truffle uh, uh, languages want to talk to any JVM-based uh, languages, like Scala or Java, they will use the Java type. So I will get that notification server, and I will just call the start method by giving it a queue that I created um, at the top. So <clears throat> um, let's see how it works. Uh, let me check. Yeah, that's the same one. So what I will do is I will compile my um, Java class first. All right. And then I will run node. Um, yeah, since I'm using uh, worker thread, I'm experimental worker. I need to check that. Um, notification receiver.js. I don't know whether it works or not. Oh, yeah, it works. So, yeah, it's just sort of console out. So it is showing that uh, the uh, the uh, items Java server is pushing into the queue at a regular period of time. All my workers is like picking it up. <clears throat> so another thing is right. All right. So um, these are the two main demos I have for you guys today. But rem uh, um, remember when I, at the start, when I mentioned that I started this crawl journey, I'm not an expert in crawl, by the way, and not like Oracle is not paying me to sort of do this talk. Um, so um, the whole reason I started looking into crawl is because I wanted to use the Java SDK um, in my Ruby code. So <clears throat> let me just show you the code, because I cannot execute that code here, because it uses all the servers uh, in, um, uh, in, in Autodesk. But I can just show you the code. So it is a uh, SDK based on uh, Kinesis. So I just took the SDK by just running the Maven and then just create a SDK with all the dependencies, and then just, um, OK, let me just make it more smaller of it. So and this is the Ruby code that actually uses the whole SDK, and it works. And I can do the same thing with, with Node.js. Because people will argue, like the people who have already worked with JRuby, like, hey, you can, all, you can, all, you can all already talk to Java. I mean, that's not a new thing. You can have like uh, JavaX.script, or your, you have Bean frameworks that can allow you uh, your J, uh, JRuby code to talk to Java. But just uh, if think about uh, the situation where you have to use more than one language. You are maybe you are coding in. In, you are creating an Express Node.js server. And then uh, you need to use R or Python or maybe some of the Ruby and other stuff in it. So th then having a consistent framework around it makes it very simple. <clears throat> All right. So is, is there any time check how much time I have? OK, let's go back to the, let's go back to our slides. So based on my journey in the like, last two months or so, uh, th there are some lessons learned based on my sort of uh, adventures with Kral VM. Um, first is, uh, this kind of solution, like a VM-based solution, is better suited for a situation where you have you want to use some library or some SDK written in some other language. I mean, there is a scope of this. There is a scope 
uh, of this interoperability. This should not be taken as one solution that can fix all of your interoperability problems. Maybe in the in the uh, if you are uh, if you are designing your overall solution more in the microservices based architecture, then the advantages of doing something like this will be very very minimal. Um, so you can choose when to use it and when not to use it. Um, it it helps if you have like working in a big organization where uh, sometimes it happens that. Um, you create something and then you create variations of it. So th these type of activities will help you create a single source of truth so that everyone is actually sort of improving it and then you are, cre you are not creating like a Java SDK and then Ruby SDK and then C++ SDK and all that. So this is a, an advantage. So you can choose when to use Graal VM and when not to use Graal VM. The second thing is there are still some performance gaps in uh, Truffle implementations, but uh, it's um, uh, uh, it's an active community. Uh, I can see like a lot of improve improvements happening, but the problem with the, the Truffle implementation uh, will always be that it will always play kind of a second fiddle to all the advancements happening on the respective uh, uh, languages. So let's say if Node.js come up with a new thing, they need to sort of come up and then do the implementation again. If Java come up with Java 12 or 13 with some totally different thing, they need to come back and do something about it. So, um, so this is something that we need to sort of take into consideration uh, while working. Maybe run some benchmarks, do some profiling, com do, do some comparisons, rigorously test it before sort of deciding what, what to do. The third thing, which is not related to Graal at all, but is like just my pain of like using JDK in Docker container, uh, doesn't fit well. Uh, it's not kind of a hidden fact anymore. So um, Java 8, if you're running and then, so it doesn't follow the, the memory and the CPU restrictions that you put on your Docker container. So sometimes you say, okay, killed. It will just say it's killed. So it will not say heap out of memory. So um, if you are experimenting, and if you can, better to use JDK 10 plus. They have a, uh, it, it has a better support for Docker containers. Um, the last thing is that Graal is not widely used in production uh, environment uh, as of now. Um, so far, I, I know from all the, all the material and all that that Twitter is using it. But I haven't seen any other kind of a success story coming out of it, saying that, okay, they are using RAL and it's like making a difference. <clears throat> um, all right, so these are all the references um, that I mainly use. Um, this is the GitHub repo uh, of mine, the Graal benchmarks that will contain all the code and all the containerized code, so you can just run it. I mean, you can run it right now and show me what are the numbers. Um, uh, Graal VM, um, GitHub, they have very good documentation. If you want to know about in the JDK world, what are the changes they did that actually enable a solution like Graal VM to come, is you can look at these uh, 243, which actually um, implemented the JVM CI. And then there are some research papers on Truffle Ruby and overall on, on LLVM based languages. <clears throat> Um, all right, uh, that's all I have. So if anyone has any questions, feel free. Yep. So, I mean, just I, let me ask you, you guys a question. I mean, w what do you think about Crawl VM? Because I am not an expert in it as well. Um, but I'm sort of just trying it out. I'm finding it cool right now. But I mean, what do you guys think on all the things I've shown here so far? Uh, is this something that you think like, ah, oh, it's interesting, or you say, uh, nah, I'm good with whatever I'm doing? Just, who, who okay, just, just raise your hands. I, like, how many of you think like, okay, this is like, this is interesting? Okay, 
Uh, that's not bad. But um, how many of you think like, okay, uh, this is, uh, ah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> okay, I, I, I mean, the, because I want to learn from you guys. I, I did, let's have like this two-way communication. So what do, you, what, what do you think? Like, what is your reservation? Or why you think like, uh, yeah, that, um, I mean, it's JVM. It goes wrong all the time. Even the, <laughs> even the uh, hotspot JVMs do that, right? So, um, no, no, but it, it is, it is a JVM. I mean, you can just take that Graal VM and you can use your, um, any JVM that you have, uh, like, uh, maybe J based on J uh, Java 10 or 11, maybe Azul or Adopt, anything. And you can just sort of configure your JVM to just use it. I can comment on that. Yeah. So uh, uh, Twitter is using Graal because they're a, a Scala shop. They are using Scala very heavily. Yes. And they benefit a lot from using Graal. Like I have figures like 20 to 30% speed improvements in my head. And, but uh, they have a dedicated team that is actually um, uh, yeah, woven into the OpenJDK development. And they, they have some guys doing uh, memory and garbage collecting. And they have some guys like uh, doing VM stuff. And they have their own internal OpenJDK, uh, no, JDK version which diverts from the OpenJDK. So they're in another position than like just like a normal, normal, what is, there's nothing like normal, but like just an outsider just want to use Java yeah. or Ruby or whatever, just want to run their programs. So whenever something goes wrong, you're pretty much on your own. All you need to know how, like, who was actually the developer in charge and how to address the developer. Yep. So you, 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 so, and that's the basic thing about any um, work with open source software. Either you need to get engaged within the community and right. know how to address the people, work with mailing lists, whatever, and file bug reports, or don't and buy some commercial support. Yeah. But there is no commercial so, support. Yeah. For, okay, for I Graal forgot to moment. tell you that. So, uh, Graal VM, they have an enterprise edition as well that they say that they will support. Like, I, I just use community version. But one thing that I, I can recommend everyone, uh, even let's say if you are not a very like a technical compiler savvy techie, uh, if you just want to see the compiler impact on, especially on the, um, on the GC on the garbage collection. So uh, since Java, uh, since JDK 10, they introduced the option where you can run your JVM by disabling the garbage collection or just not doing it at all. So I mean, the easiest way, if, if, I, if I want to do it with a limited knowledge, what I will do is I will just give it a very high uh, memory and then just run it without the garbage collector and see how it works and then use it with one compiler and then use it with another compiler. So you can at least get like a, some rough estimate, a ballpark, like how things are sort of uh, working. But again, having a dedicated team, I agree with you, Twitter, they have like people dedicated working on optimizing all their Java, JVM based compilers and making it sort of make sure that it remain, uh, remain there. Uh, I mean, for ooh, exper I experimenting it with, it, uh, with that is okay. Like, if you plan like to go in production like within a year and like you have a little bit time to get in contact with the people, then uh, then it's fine. If you want to yeah. uh, run something in production today, uh, it's it's uh, still a bit uh, bleeding right. edge. I agree because I I haven't seen any other kind of a big success story coming out of Crawl other than Twitter. But um, let's see in future. Um, yeah, any other questions? I'm, I'm just making questions right now. <laughs> 
Anyone who, who has experiences, um, positive or negative, with the JVM stack that they might be interested in sharing? We have uh, five minutes left. Yeah. Or, I mean, you can ask me, like, I, I'll be here today, just, tomorrow. Just another comment on the, which is another topic, actually, about the, the, the cloud thing. Yes. You said. Um, there are a lot of improvements uh, in, in 10 and 11, which makes it better suited for Docker containers. They, the, the switch to the new garbage collector, the G1 garbage collector is one example, which gives back more aggressively yes. the memory back uh, to the operating system. Um, the problem is at the moment that uh, Java 11 is actually the long-term service release, yeah. but it still has some serious bugs and there's yeah. Uh, some security updates, maintenance release in the works. So um, uh, um, people are hesitating now to s actually switch to 11. And so at, at the moment, uh, if you have like critical production workloads, you should stay with eight, wait for the next six maintenance release of 11. So it's, uh, at yeah. the moment, there's a lot of uh, um, flow in these all open JDK development, there is a switch that actually uh, Oracle steps down uh, with their leadership in, in the open JDK development and Red Hat does the maintenance releases. So this is all like stuff that, uh, yeah, is, is in the flow at the moment. Yeah. And I, I I totally agree with you. Uh, this is the case. Um, I Because most of the applications which is based on Java right now, they are mainly running on Java 8. I haven't seen any like production Java, Java applications on any financial institutes or like anywhere running on Java 10 or 11. Um, but I think probably sooner or later people will make the move because recently uh, Oracle sort of changed their arrangement with how they will do the backporting, and you need to sort of engage with them in the licensing form. So either you go to some other, if, if you want the backport, let's say if they added a new feature in Java 11 and you want it in Java 8, because usually right now it happens There's if you use. Stuff going on there. Yes. The this yeah. Good, yeah, so that's an interesting topic. We, we can discuss about it, and um, yeah. so. Are we, are we good? Any okay, other questions? Let's uh, thank Oasis. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.